Welcome today, folks. Corset through time. We're doing 12, 13, 14, uh, 16, sorry, I ran out of, and 19. And uh, obviously, I don't want to make an hour-long video, so we're going to split it. First, we're going to start off with this old crinkly box. I hated when they did that back in the day. You know what I'm talking about? Where they, like, they'd have like a crinkle, like it would be, the top piece would be wrinkled. All right, so anyways, these boxes belong to my patron, Carlos, all the way from Colombia. Dude, that's a long drive, man. No, seriously. Anyways, Carlos, good luck, man. Um, thank you for being a loyal, generous, kind patron. And uh, those are cool, man. Look how awesome those old packs look. It's got like a gritty, like concrete look. All right, so good luck, man. Oh, dude, how cool is that? Look at the side of the M12 packs. When's the last time you've seen that? How neat is that? That is super cool. Look at that. That is really neat how you can see all the different colors like that. All right, so today, we're first, we're gonna open the uh, 12 and 13. We're gonna start with the old stuff today and finish up tomorrow with the uh, Origins and other ones and talk about what's going on with this stuff. Um, first of all, the prices of the sealed boxes have been doing very well. Uh, ah, starting off with the bulk dollar Phoenix. The price of the uh, singles have remained relatively flat. So uh, let's see what we got here. There's some pricey cards in these old ones, and the foils are real spicy. All right, call to the grave. Nice $2 rare. <laughs> the Pentavite. Anybody remember these things? First time I saw these things, I thought they were like flying Legos. So super weird. Carlos is like, I like Legos. I can go with that. Legos are cool. All right, let's see how you do. So far, Carlos, you're doing okay. You're not doing that great. And Throne of Empires, another dollar to two dollar rare. So we're at no foils so far. We're at uh, no mythics. Only uh, about four or five packs in. Let's see where life takes us today, shall we? Oblivion up. Uh, oh, missed an uncommon. Dijon of Dijin. Not Dijon mustard. Dijin of wishes. Another little dollar rare. We have our first foil. Stonehorn, you know what's funny? A common foil like this is probably worth three, four dollars. Versus the rare that's worth like a dollar. It's super crazy how that works. The, the old foil common uncommons are all about the money, man. You have no idea, everybody. And the old ghoul from another dollar rare. And that's advertising the 2012 Duel of the Planeswalkers. Isn't that crazy? Well, uh, so far, Carlos, this is a normal boring box. You have not hit anything spicy, man. Dude, you better get some luck going, man. And Gideon, that's Z. I just had to yell at you. That's all I had to do. Gideon Aura. Okay. First Mythic. Nice Gideon Planeswalker. Remember, this was 2012. So Planeswalkers were still like uh, relatively new and spicy. Not like War of the Spark 2019 Planeswalkers, everybody. All right. And Rootbound Crag. There's our first of the infamous land from the land cycles in these old core sets. I'm trying to remember. Wouldn't this thing have like a... Uh, God, I can't even remember all the co Oh! Phantasmal Image was in this? I thought it was M13. Fant one of the best rares in the set. Holy smokes. And a foil Crimson Mage. That's a nice uncommon foil. All right. Wow. Gideon and an image. Okay. All right. Changing course here, folks. I'm surprisingly... Wow. Okay. And Flame Blast Dragon for the $1.50 rare. Nothing exotic there, folks. Nothing exotic there. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Swift Foot, Combust, Bell Tower, and Sphinx, really? They printed that in M12, M13, and I think that's in a Masters product. I don't know what the certain cards, I swear Wizards has like an obsession of reprinting over and over. And Angelic Destiny. Absolutely beautiful, epic card, man. Anybody remember this, Mythic? To this day, fantastic. Has, that's holds some pretty good value. That card has not been reprinted or seen attention in a very, very long time. Very, very good card, everybody. And Cemetery Reaper for the couple dollar rare. Very nice. We do have a foil. And oh! <laughs> foil Bonder! Best foil in the set! Wow! Oh my god! What are the odds of that? Oh my god! Dude, Carlos, slap me in the face.com! Are you serious? Wow! Oh, man, this one sucks. The old angel, that's the uh, welcome deck infamous $1 angel. Holy smokes. Flipping Stonehorn Common and Ponder, the best common foils in the set, folks. 
Dude, that is epic and a crappy spider. Nobody cares. With two good mythics and the image, the Phantasm. Wow, this is actually turning out to be a really good box. Told you, you can't predict this stuff, folks. You have no idea. Ah, uh, the Enchantress. You've been reprinted so many times. What are you? Uh, M12, M13, what, and Eternal Masters, I think you were reprinted in? I remember that on the, the mess box. Oh! Chandra looking smoking. Get it? Smoking hot fire. Okay, you guys suck. Whatever. Three good mythics in this box. Not bad. I gotta admit, I'm really surprised and impressed. I'm really shocked right now. The Vengeance for the nice $2 rare. Oh my god. Rune Scarred Foil Rare. This is one of the... Is that actually a little smeared ink? No? Rune Scarred Demon Foil Rare. Fantastic Foil Rare. That's one of the rares that was like a dollar for a long time. It actually spiked to four or five. I think that's like a $10 plus foil rare. I could be wrong because I don't know what I'm talking about. And the Satchel used to make fun of this card years ago. And actually, it, people buy it all the time for like $2. It's really weird. Wow, this is actually a pretty good box. Okay. Ah, yes. Simulacrum. Great, great M12 rare. Another good, I think, what, five bucks maybe? Wow, we're hitting a lot of good cards in this set. Jeez, okay. And uh, that's where the uh, infamous Tetris tokens up. Swampy and Foil Swampy. All right, second half over here, folks. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not a bad little opening. And Adaptive Automaton. Not a bad little rare again. Man, brings back some serious memories, everybody. Because I, I barely even remember half these things. Oh, Grand Abolisher. Man, that brings back some memories. Man, he was he was like the shiznit cool dude. I own everything in Wizards back in the day, man. He was a heavy hitter. And the El ah, Dungrove Elder, little tree folk with some hexproof action. Not a bad little guy. All right, everybody. Down to the last third of M12. I still love M12. It was so funny when I acquired these boxes so long ago. Ah, the Horde. Nobody. People were so negative on M12. Dude, it was like in 2013, I think I was buying these. It was just like, oh my god, a double tap Grand Abolisher! Wow! Okay. Dude. And a foil. Oh my god. Foil Firewalkers. Anybody? Diablo? Fantastic foil uncommon. Holy smokes. What a good box. Lord of the Unreal. Another good rare. And just, oh my god, and a foil manolith. Fantastic foil common again. Holy crap, these are great pools. This is really impressive. And a glacial fortress for rare land cycle card number two. Like, I am just seriously just shocked on the quality of the pools in this video. Royal Assassin, infamous. No real value unless it's alpha beta, but you know what? Still a very, very iconic card, folks. All right, here we go. Great Sword Turn, Flat, and Sundial. The infamous Sundial. First time I saw that card when I was younger, I was like, dude, seriously? What on earth is the point of this card? And then everybody said, Rudy, if you knew what magic the Goothering was, you would know. Visions of Beyond, another reprinted card recently. I cannot believe we double-tapped Grand Abolisher in this opening. Like, that is just... And Garouk for Mythic number four! God, there's somebody you don't see every day anymore. Wow. This is probably one of the best M12 box openings you can pretty much get from buying this product. Mind Unbound for the $1 to $2 rare. Like, this is the... You really don't get a better product. Or a better product. A better box opening. This is... And Birds. Wouldn't be a course set without Birdies of Paradise. Nice $5 bill all day long. Turns out to be a good set again, doesn't it, folks? Quite amazing. And Mana Barbs, very iconic card. And, oh, oh, just a foil. Yeah, foil worm. Nothing special, everybody. All right, everyone. Not bad. Not a bad little video here. Honor of the Pure. Yeah, little dollar rare. Last pack of this. We're going to do M13 also today, folks. See how we do. And boop, boop, boop. And ending with the Archon of Justice. Not a bad opening, everybody. All right, everybody. Next, we're jumping to... That's M14. My bad. We're jumping to M13. You ready? We're not going to pause the video or, or do anything. We are highly trained, professional uh, YouTubers. We know exactly what we're doing. 
Don't try to act like it. You guys pretend like we don't know what we're doing on this channel. We are pros. I went to 48 years of education to learn how to do this. Oh my God, the box is falling apart. It's so old. All right, the infamous all gray silver black packs. I love these packaging back in the day. One of my favorite mass box opening sets a long time ago, everybody. M13. Loved it. Loved doing it. I did a... Um, I can't remember. I did two mass boxes. I think one was like 140 boxes. All right. Odrick. Not bad. Not bad. Arbor Elf. Right out of the gate. Dude, Carlos slapped me with a taco, man. First common. First foil. Flipping one of the best commons in the set again. I can't believe you hit a foil ponder as your common, man. Like, are you kidding me? That was insanity. Staff of Nin. First time I saw that, I was that was one of my favorite cards. I thought that was one of the coolest cards the first time I saw it. Very, very fun, unique card. Love that card. All right, everybody. Next, Crimson Ring Flames. And there it is. Sublime Archangel for Mythic number one. And not... What was that? Ultimate Masters? Where did, where did she get reprinted from? Anybody remember? I can't quite remember where she came from. Battle of Wits for the dollar rare. Swing and a miss. Now, M13, historically, has been said to be weaker from M12. The, the market was even more negative on M13 than it was on M12. Faith's Reward, meh. Reprinted in Conspiracy 2. Take the crown. That uh, very, very uh, suppressed the value from any form of possible growth. Augur, Bandit, Rise, and really? The Sphinx in M12 and the Sphinx in M13, huh? That was completely, like, really? That was my point. Some cards, it's just like you... I don't know why Wizards print certain ones to Oblivion. It's super weird. Trading Post. I love this card. The fact there were so many different abilities of it. I love that card. I know it's not a super powerful card. But I just love the choice and flexibilities of that particular card. And of course I love artifacts. Really can't. Can't say negative about artifacts. And Elvish Arch Druid. Not a bad little Elvish guy. He was always a cool little dude. And we got a foil. Oh! Foil Sun Petal. Foil rare is the sun petal. Okay. That was quite unexpected. Again, dude, the fo your foil pull rates are probably some of the best foil pull rates I've probably ever seen. Straight up. I mean, the foil pull rates on these last two boxes. Ah, uh, the Overlord of Grixis. Still a dollar rare. Probably always will be the dollar rare. I think I sell that card on eBay for like a dollar eighty or something. All right. Here we go. Furnace, Angelic, Primal, and we got the Leech. L nice little dollar, two dollar rare again. Well, that's where we're sitting here, folks. So far, uh, let's see, where are we? Where we got, uh, we got one good, f God, the foiling. Intrepid Hero for the couple dollars, and oh, f Jace is Phantasm. That's one of the better foil uncommon. Your foils are insanity. Like, I am just blown away that even all the common uncommons, you're getting the good ones. In foil, which is just very unlikely. Very improbable. Sands of Delirium. Very cool, creepy little card. Alright, middle 12 packs of the box. I be Wasn't M13 the one with the rings? Isn't this the one with the ring? Drown Catacomb for the first regular rare in the box. I loved... I think this was the set with all the artifact rings. There was like five of them. I loved it. The rings, man. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm thinking M14. Oh, Slumbering Dragon. This is one that's actually gone up a little bit recently. And, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure this... I can't remember if it was M13 or 14 that had all the rings in it. I really want to show you guys what I'm talking about. I love the ring cycle. Ah, uh, Ground Seal. Yeah. And, oh, we got a foil. Foil rare. Disciple of Bolas. Alright. Actually, wait. What am I talking about? That's our second foil rare. We just got the Sun Petal. Okay, man, you and the foils. You got a stack of foils in this box. And they're all good almost. Staff and uh oh, duplication time. Alright, so we just double tap staff. I'm not liking that we're already in duplicate rare. And we're only halfway through the box. That's a little concerning, especially in a core set. It's not like it's a little set. And uh, the $2 spider. Alright, here we are, folks. Well, um, what do you think? Overall, not bad. You've done pretty good, Carlos. Not bad for a Carlos from Colombia. Oh, there's... Oh, the rings were uncommon. That's why. I thought they were rares. Okay. I was like, I love the rings a long time ago. Mutilate. That always creeped me out, man. That was a creepy little card that always... I was always like, oh, That's kind of, uh... Kind of scares me. Artwork kind of 
Really freaks me out, man. Ah, right, here we go. Avon, Mind Claw, Vamp, and Rootbound. Another root. See, that's the thing. Why do they always put that particular land cycle in the core sets? Like, why do they do that? Why? Can't we do something new or different? I don't know. Oh, Thunderclaw Hellkite. Anybody want to talk about the history here? Used to be a $30 Dragon Mythic back in the day. And then it tanked, and then it's like stabilized at what? Is it even five, ten bucks anymore? Ah, uh, rings. I just thought those were so cool, man, when I was younger. Oh, Nico! <laughs> oh, Nico Bolas, the Planeswalker. Oh, my God. I didn't even realize. And a foil Evolving Wild. Don't corner the market in Evolving Wilds, everybody. Stop buying out the market. Do not do market buyouts with Evolving Wilds. You'll ruin the industry. Helion Crucible. Always a neat little card, but has no real playable value. Just too expensive to activate. Just just too weak of a card. Straight up, everybody. Just too weak of a card, man. All right. And redirect. What do you guys think of that? All the forks, the redirects, all the different ones, deflections. Remember all these cards over the years? They always do that. All these different variants of counter spells and redirects like that. Ah, uh, the Faith Mender. I always thought he was a cool dude. That whole double life thing really, uh, the first time I saw that, I was like, whoa. That's got some serious room for shenanigans, everybody. All right, and Fervor. Eh, another dollar rare. Well, M13's not treating us as well. I guess everybody was right. Everybody says M12 is where it's at, and M13's a little weaker, but, you know, eh, it's not. Void Stalker, terrible rare. I'm not even going to BS anybody. Just not a fan at all. That's, that card never changed anybody's lives. All right, here we are. Angelic Knight, Fungal, and Diabolic Revelation for another dollar rare. Oh, well. What are you going to do, folks? What are you going to do? Not much you can do. All right. Invocation Arms, Public, and Planar Cleansing. Oh, with a... Oh, sorry. Just a foil duress. Thought we had a foil, like, rare or mythic or something. Yeah, remember the foil... The foil rare. Even the foil mythics are pretty pricey, man. If you get some of these heavy-hitting cards in mythic... Stormtide Leviathan... Oh, I got the... Oh, there you go. Dude, Carlos. Foil ring, man. Oh, love it. So cool. Such a pretty cool card, man. I know that I know they're not worth much. I just think they're really cool cards. Just a personal thing. I know they're not worth a ton. Ah, oh, the infamous clone. All the way from the alpha beta days. Am I right? Old school, everybody. Uh, ring of Arcus. Ring. Oh, double ring. And uh, there he is. The Fagstroth. Ugh. I always thought that was a cool... I'm, I'm surprised certain cards like that are not worth more. You know, honestly, I always, certain cards always surprise me because it, it's very difficult to predict the values long-term of this stuff. Creepy Hot Chick, you got to look out for her. Still about a dollar card, but still, you got to look out. She's shady. She's shady, Carlos. She's shady, man. Be careful, bro. All right, here we go. Mind Claw, Rain, Phyrexian, and the Nature's Herald. Very beautiful young lady card. Still, I think she's only like two bucks, but still a cool little card. All right, here we are, everybody. A couple packs left. We're getting to the home stretch for the day. And Glacial Fortress. We did get that in the M12 box. So we got an M12 and an M13 version. So kind of is what it is, but all right. Whatever. And Elder Scale Worm. Ah, oh, Mythic number three for the box is a flipping worm. Well, looks like we're ending on a three Mythic box, everybody. Last pack for today. Captain of the Watch with a foil divine verdict. All right, let's finish some more boxes tomorrow. Don't want to. I don't like making the videos too long. People don't watch them. Other than that, thanks, Carlos. We will resume the next three boxes tomorrow, Giggity.